Welcome to Afric Vibe News, the voice of a bold, rising Africary writing its own future, one revolution at a time. Today we bring you an extraordinary transformation, a story that defies poverty, pollution, and dependence. What if I told you that millions of discarded plastic bottles, the same bottles clogging our gutters, choking our rivers, and polluting our lands are now being turned into a symbol of dignity and innovation in Burkina Faso? Yes, you heard that right. Under the bold leadership of Captain Ibrahim, Burkina Faso has launched a groundbreaking environmental and health initiative that is turning plastic waste into durable plastic commode chairs serving thousands of internally displaced persons, elderly citizens, and rural clinics across the country. This isn't just about recycling. It's about restoring dignity, creating local jobs, and launching a pan-African blueprint for sustainable transformation from the heart of West Africa. A nation battered by war and instability is rising to give the world a lesson in circular economy. This is not just a news story, it's a movement. This is a Frick Vibe News, and today we unveil the power of trash to treasure under the fearless vision of Ibrahim. Stay tuned. Plastic bottles used once, discarded forever, every day, across African cities and villages. Millions of single-use plastic bottles are consumed and thrown away. They litter our markets. They choke our drainage systems. They kill livestock and contaminate crops. In Burkina Faso alone, it is estimated that over 150 million plastic bottles are wasted annually with no formal recycling infrastructure to process them. But Ibrahim saw opportunity in this disaster. He asked a revolutionary question. Can waste be turned into wealth? Can garbage become a tool of transformation? In 2024, his administration began exploring low-cost, high-impact recycling methods to handle plastic waste while solving other social problems, like public sanitation and mobility challenges for the elderly and displaced. It started small just a pilot in the outskirts of Ouagadougou, under S. Directive, local engineers, youth cooperatives, and NGOs were given access to machinery that melts and molds plastic waste into useful products. The plastic commode chair was born from a simple but powerful idea, transform something toxic into something essential. These chairs are lightweight but durable, easy to clean and sanitize. Designed for elderly, disabled, and displaced people built from 90% post-consumer plastic bottles. The government partnered with local waste collectors, who began collecting plastic bottles from landfills, roadsides, and homes paying them per kilogram. This created thousands of new green jobs instantly, and what was once seen as trash now became an income stream for low-income communities. By mid-2025, the pilot had grown into a nationwide program called Plastic Poor. Plastic for Dignity. The initiative now involves 50 plastic collection centers, 12 rural-based mini factories, over 8,000 youth and women employed in sorting, cleaning, and manufacturing. Distribution of over 100,000 commode chairs, two hospitals, refugee camps, and elderly homes instead of importing expensive medical equipment from Europe or China, Burkina Faso is now producing and exporting its own eco-products. Several West African nations including Mali, Guinea, and Niger have signed up to replicate. The project with Burkina Faso's guidance, this has become more than just a plastic solution. It's a new green industrial model born out of African ingenuity. President Ibrahim, has always been clear about his mission, self-reliance, sovereignty, sustainability. He believes that every crisis from plastic pollution to displacement can become a launchpad for innovation if Africans take control of their resources, waste, and creativity. In one of his now famous speeches, he said, they said we are poor because we have no industry, but we are rich in waste, and waste, if transformed, is power. We shall recycle our pain into purpose. The Plastic Commode Chair Project is part of a broader green strategy under Burkina Faso is establishing Africa's first decentralized plastic-to-furniture industrial cluster, training youth in eco-engineering and product design, providing subsidies for eco-startups using recycled materials, using eco-products in government hospitals and schools. It's the fusion of environmental justice, economic development, and social care a vision that puts people and planet first. In the town of Kaya, 62-year-old, Adamawe Draugo used to walk to the bushes every day to relieve herself. Frail and displaced by conflict, she could barely move without pain. Now, with her recycled commode chair, donated through S Plastic Revolution, her life has changed. 
I feel like a human being again, she says. In the Sahel region, clinics now have hygienic, reusable commode chairs that reduce the risk of infection. They are used in maternity wards, emergency tents, and rural health centers. Meanwhile, hundreds of young men once unemployed or part of militia groups are now earning a living collecting and processing plastic waste. What was once a symbol of neglect plastic bottles is now a symbol of rebirth. Other African nations are taking note. The African Union East Green Task Force has officially recognized Burkina Faso as Plastic for Dignity Project as a model of circular economy for developing countries. Delegates from Uganda, Rwanda, Senegal, and Ghana have visited the factories in and Bobo Diolasso to study the model. Here's how this can be replicated across Africa. Map major waste streams in each country develop low-cost local recycling tech train local youth and women in recycling entrepreneurship design products that serve local needs like school desks, commodes, bins, and shelters. Create national collection networks tied to cash incentives use government procurement to boost local eco-products. Isn't just building a Burkina Faso model. He's offering Africa a vision of resource independence. The economic upside is massive. Since launching the initiative, Burkina Faso has saved over $12 million in medical imports, created over 15,000 green jobs, reduced plastic pollution in urban zones by 35% increased. Tax revenues through new eco-business registrations launched an export stream of recycled plastic products to ECOWAS countries. In 2026, plans to open Africa's largest recycled plastic innovation center funded through a $40 million public-private partnership with South American and Asian green tech firms. Burkina Faso may soon begin producing plastic school chairs and desks, water storage units, modular plastic bricks for emergency housing, and even prosthetic limbs from recycled plastic Africa's youth face two major challenges, unemployment and climate crisis. But is flipping the script. He's building an economy where waste creates jobs, where pollution births innovation, and where young Africans become the designers of their future. In Ouagadougou, the government has launched the Ecoyouth Academy, a center where students are trained in product prototyping using recycled plastic small factory. Management circular economy business models, sustainable packaging design graduates leave with the skills and in some cases, the equipment to launch their own ventures across Burkina Faso and beyond. The United Nations Environment Program recently featured the project in its Global Solutions Report 2025, naming it one of the top 10 green innovations in Africa. Eco leaders from Europe and Asia have visited to learn how such a low tech but high impact solution is making real change in a resource limited country. Some have even suggested using it as a case study for climate resilience in war torn zones. This project, born out of necessity, has now become a beacon of what sustainable development truly looks like led by Africans, for Africans. What does it take to change the world? Not money, not foreign aid, just vision, courage, and the will to act, Ibrahim, has proven that even in the harshest conditions, transformation is possible when a leader commits to serving the people with innovation and honesty, from waste bottles to dignity restoring chairs, his message is loud and clear. Nothing in Africa is useless, not even trash, especially not our people. If you believe in an Africa that rises on its own terms, if you want to see real solutions driven by real African leadership, then like, share, and subscribe to Afric Vibe News, where we tell the stories they won't show you on mainstream media. This is not the end of the story, it is the beginning of a continent screen revolution. Africa is not waiting anymore. Africa is building. Thank you for watching.